Hey guys, welcome back to BMW Vlog YouTube channel and welcome to Palm Springs, California. You might have seen our first video of the BMW XM, but now to learn more about the car, I have with me Sven Ritter. He's the head of project for BMW XM. Sven, great to see you once again. We had a chance to meet each other when I drove the prototype XM, but now it's finally here. So I would love to learn more about the car. So first, let's start with the project name Rockstar. Why did you name it Rockstar? I mean, it is, uh, as you can see, it is not a regular BMW. It's uh, it kind of show-off car for people who really like the extroverted style in their lives. Uh, and that's, I think, a target customer group, which we do not have any offers yet. And that's the tryout for that. And therefore, in a mood board, it was a kind of rock star. Okay. You could also say sports celebrities or something like this. But that was the idea behind do something which would be interesting for a rock star. So if you dig a little bit deeper into the user persona for the car, like how would you describe that person like a lot more than just being like a rock star? Like why would it be looking at an XM versus let's say an X5 van? Yeah, I mean if you're looking for something really special for yourself to show what you can do, what you have achieved, etc., etc., there are some cars already on the market which Joe's customer target group will choose today, like G-Wagons, like Eurus's, like DBX's, and so on and so on. At the moment, we don't have an offer, but we are convinced that technology-wise, we have the best offer for that, you know? We have the very strong M brand. M cars are very, very famous, therefore it was easy. And I think that the M brand is strong enough to make an offer for those customers who really like to show what they have, especially in the US and in China and in the Middle East. Uh, that's very uh, common. Let me say it that way. And you can see then on Instagram, they even tune those cars in, in, in heavy style sometimes. And they really like to show what they have and enjoying what they have achieved. So before we talk about the design, because we have to talk about that a little bit, tell me more about the platform, you know, the architecture that's based on. I mean, it is uh, based on the Kla architecture, okay. only the architecture is called Kla. Also the X7 is based on the Kla architecture and this car is too based on the Kla architecture. And yes, we do have, for instance, the wheelbase from the X7, but it is not the X7 uh, base car at all. As you can see, every single part is new on this car, mm -hmm. uh, including the floor, because there is no X7 as a hybrid version yet, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do have a hybrid, so therefore we created, based on the Kla architecture, a complete new derivate on this. Okay. And if you talk about dimensions, how would it compare to the X7, for example? Like as far as maybe length, wheelbase, width, interior space maybe as well? Yeah. I mean, uh, as you can see, the car doesn't have a third seat row, therefore mm -hmm. the car is a bit shorter, about five centimeters shorter than an X7, but it is longer than an X5, so we are in between. We have an overall length of five meters and ten centimeters, that's the overall length. Uh, but also, also you can see the side frame is going down in the rear, as so it is a bit a coupe, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore it's dimensional-wise from the length between an X5 and X7, and from the width is about X7 level, I would say. What has changed compared to the concept car? So I've seen a concept car before, but can you point some of the things that have really changed? I mean, clearly I've noticed the lights on top of the roof, they're gone, but anything else overall that you think might have changed? I mean, as we communicated it, when we showed the concept car for the very first time, we tried to stick as uh, close as possible to the design of the concept car. Obviously the uh, lights in the roof are not there anymore. That's homologation reasons behind okay. that. But anything else, we really try to keep it as close as possible. So there are not really many features which we couldn't take over. Obviously, most of the features, like for instance, our vintage leather is a bit more industrialized than it is in a concept car. That's mm -hmm. one of the manufacturing car. You cannot do that for serious production, but we develop the vintage leather as it has the same look, the used look. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and basically, yeah, that's it basically. I mean, dimensional wise and features wise, daytime running lights, kidney grill, illuminated and so on. We really tried also the theme of the mm -hmm. rear lights. We tried really to carry over that, including the two BMW sign laser craved mm -hmm. into the rear window instead of having classical badges. So we tried to take over as, as much as possible. That sure. was the challenge. Yeah. Maybe we start with the wheels, right? Probably the largest you offer today? Yes, it is. It is the very first time that we offer the 23 inches from the factory. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting at 21 inches. Then you can have the 22 inches with both HP tires and UHP tires. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously uh, the nicest tires are the 23s in two different colors. You can see that the uh, color night gold, which you see in the side window frame, mm -hmm. as well as in the kidney and the wheels, that's all in the night gold and a very nice one 
And yes, it is the largest real we offer at BMW at the moment. So before I ask you another question about the design, I've always been curious why the charging port is always on the left side. Is there more of a design choice or is function over form? I mean, basically that's based on the architecture we have chosen. In that okay. architecture, it is planned to have that on the left front side. Okay. And therefore, like for instance, the X5 PHEV, we have it on the same area mm -hmm. because the technology behind or the charging technology behind it uh, is basically architecture uh, driven and therefore it's on, on that place. Gotcha. So as far as colors, this is Cape York Green, so that's the positioning color. What other color choices you offer right now and do you plan to offer BMW individual in the future? Yeah, for the launch in uh, next year in April, mm -hmm. we do have several very nice M's colors, as you all know them, San Marino Blue and so on and so on, mm -hmm. Toronto Red and so on. Uh, but yes, obviously the target group we try to uh, mm -hmm. match will ask for individual BMW individual colors and we will offer all of them from A23 onwards. Mm -hmm. So you can choose them, all the colors which uh, the plant Spartanburg can produce, more than 50 at the moment, you can have for the XM, obviously. Yeah. Speaking Including of the, frozen okay. and so on and so on. Gotcha. Speaking of the plant, something that just came to mind right now, did you have to modify the production line to accommodate yes. the XM or was it yes. on the same X7 line? I mean, it is on the line, but we had okay. to modify it, obviously, okay. because there are a lot of new technologies into that car for the very first time for Plan 10. For instance, the 48 volt anti roll system mm -hmm. is not there yet. The uh, rear wheel steering is not there yet. So we mm -hmm. are the, uh, a car which brings a lot of technology for the very first time. And that also influences the production line, obviously. But uh, nevertheless, it is the same production that there's one line for the big X's in Spartanburg and uh, we are running on that line. Gotcha. So now to jump back a little bit to the design, uh, any reason why you decided to go with the normal door handle instead of the flushed ones that were seen on the concept? I mean, again, that's based on the architecture. We are okay. from the CLA architecture, and the CLA architecture does have the, let me say, regular door handles. Okay. Uh, and also, there is a design element on it, as you can see it, like the headliner, like the inner tailgate trim, and also on the uh, door handle, we wanted to have a specific design element, mm -hmm. and that would have been very, very difficult with the new door handles to integrate that. And as it is a very special car, we were able to keep with those door handles and bring the design element as an additional feature to it. Let's take a look in the back maybe before we talk a little bit more about the engine and the drivetrain. Maybe we finish up with the design. So in my opinion, I think the, the rear end has changed a little bit compared to the concept. So I feel like the glass and especially the spoiler roof are a little bit different. Can you point out some of the changes here specifically from the concept? Yeah, I mean, from the concept, uh, there are a couple of issues which we cannot bring into serious conditions. The rear spoiler is mainly driven in the concept by design. Okay. For us, it is obviously not only driven by design, but also by uh, aerodynamics and mm -hmm. so on. And, and, and therefore, that's the result we have here. But uh, one of the most important things is our two laser crave BMW signs, our XM signs. Also, the theme of the rear lights is uh, more or less carry over, including the exhaust tailpipes, the form of them. We made them black. Concept car is mm -hmm. silver, but we made them black. And so we try to carry over as much as possible. But obviously, if you do a one-off, you can, can do a bit more mm -hmm. than in serious production. But we try to get it as close as possible. Speaking of the exhaust pipes, right? So that's a first, you know, vertically stacked. Yes. Once again, function over form or do Last they sound one. better? And now they do not sound better. I mean, that's not a question because the application for the sound is something mm -hmm. independently from the geometry. Okay. So you do that with the flaps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, to compose a kind of start, sure. starting sound and V8 sound. And we wanted to have a proper V8 sound. Uh, uh, and therefore, that is really a design feature. I mean, as you know, the BMW M cars all have four exhaust uh, pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we want to have something special, we tried, OK, we keep with four, but make them really special. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, they are not simple round. They are formed and uh, very, very special uh, as it is a. And they are functional, right? Yeah, there's, a, there's flaps in it, okay. obviously, of course, yeah, we have the flaps, uh, which so we need today to make them. Is there a difference in between the exhaust for European markets versus the US? Um, not in the rear bit. Okay. We do have the OPF in the European yep. market, so which you don't difference. have. Yep. That is the difference, gotcha. basically, but that's it, basically. Okay. The rest is the same. Now, back to the design a little bit more. Visibility through the rear window, have you tested that? Decent? Good? Yeah, of course, we tested it. I mean. There's one thing I have to mention with the window, with the rear window, but also with the rear door windows. Mm -hmm. You can see it is tinted. Okay. And the kind of tinting is 20% even darker than regular BMW privacy class. Okay. You know, because we want to have this cocoon 
feeling in the rear, and yeah. therefore it is a bit harder to look through. There's no question about that, especially sure. at night. Uh, but when you see from the few beam, what mm -hmm. we call it, yeah, in the rear mirror and so on, yeah. that's all what the BMW has to have. So cool. that's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's open the trunk. First things first, you have a bag that probably holds something special. Exactly. That's for the charging, charging cable. cable. Okay. It's a watertight bag and we okay. want it as the whole car is something special. We said we do not want to only have a, uh, a regular charging cable gotcha. bag, but something special. And uh, yeah, we've asked our design team, our styling team to do something really special. So what they came up is this. Okay. Uh, which you can also choose for a little shopping or a weekend or whatever you prefer. So again, that shows this car is really special. Gotcha. Cargo space compared to maybe, let's say, X5, X7, so we can put it in perspective for both cars. I mean, we do have 520 liters. Okay. Uh, and then you fold down the seats and we have more than 1800 liters. Okay. So that's quite a big one. So that's again, something between X5 and X7. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, loading boot a little bit higher than... It is, okay. as we do have the fuel tank in the trunk and also the 48 volt system, which okay. we are the only dairy weight which has that in the X class. Uh, all the technology is uh, below that boot, so it's a little bit higher. But again, for the customer group, we try to find, they normally do not use it for transporting uh, washing machines and stuff like this, you know? Okay. So therefore it's probably more for Gucci bags and stuff like this, and for that okay. is more than enough. Gotcha. Let me close this up and before we go inside, one final question here. Do you plan to offer a carbon fiber diffuser maybe? Not from the factory, but who knows what M Performance is doing. Okay. I know that they do have some ideas. I have seen okay. something already, but I can't speak about it today. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So let's hop inside. Maybe we go in the front seat and talk a little bit about what has changed from the concept. Then we can also talk about the rear bench as well. All right, so one thing that I noticed immediately, of course, I've seen the videos and the photos before kind of the entire cockpit has changed compared to the concept which is a pity because i truly loved it i felt like that was one of the best so tell me first why have you changed that and then we can talk about some of the new additions in the car yeah again as i said on the outside i mean there are some things in the concept car which are for one of absolutely fine because time and money doesn't matter in those cars you know on the other hand we try to keep as much as possible as i said already the vintage leather we developed new for this car and all the classical m bits the sport steering wheel with the M buttons, the original uh, gear changer, etc. Sure. So that is classical M. The carbon fiber trim is exclusively for this car, the matte carbon, yeah, it's exclusively for the XM. Okay. Okay. And so we try to keep as much as possible, but not all of them. For instance, the buttons for the air condition was not a serious concept at all. That was a one-off, yeah. Gotcha. Drilled okay. from one big block of aluminum. That's not something which you could do for a serious production car. Understood. I've also noticed that the steering wheel, it's different. Yeah. Now the reason is that this is the known M steering wheel from mm -hmm. X5M and M5 and M8. Okay. And this is a kind of carryover uh, as this is the best uh, compromise at the moment from what we have for the M cars. And therefore we don't want to make a complete new steering wheel just for the XM because that's a kind of uh, industrial uh, standard for BMW M. And in the next generation, you mm -hmm. see it already with the seven series, this has already the next generation M steering wheel. Yeah. Gotcha. Is there something specific to the XM inside the car that you might not see in the X5 M right now, for example? Yeah, I mean, for instance, the HMI is completely different. We have okay. the M HMI uh, for a hybrid car. That's the very first time uh, ever, obviously, as it is the very first electrified M high performance car. So you can see the both engines running, bouncing around the speedometer needles uh, for electric driven or ice driven. Uh, obviously, that is really special. Yeah, and that's basically it. I mean, uh, anything else is new anyway from the geometry, as you can see. The IP panel is new, the headliner, sculpture headliner is special for the car. Seats are new mm -hmm. and yeah, so drop Tell me a story about the headliner because it's kind of like 3D sculpted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, uh, the car is design driven, not only performance driven, but also design driven. We mm -hmm. wanted to have something really special which you can show to your friends. Look what I have. You can't get mm -hmm. that in, in your car, you know. And therefore, that was a kind of a pre development issue. Mm -hmm. And we made it happen that we can industrialize in, 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 in pre series. We, we got a new supplier for mm -hmm. it, and he was really very, very intensive involved to bring that to a serious concept and then we said okay this d dimensional headliner is very nice already what else can we do and then we came up with the mb light in different colors you can have all rgb colors and mm -hmm. m stripes in it and so on and so on it is especially when you sit on the rear seat it is really mm -hmm. special it has a nice dimensional three-dimensional touch mm -hmm. uh, and therefore that's the reason behind it something special it's not a functional issue it's just a design feature gotcha. 
So before we move to the back seat to take a look at that, let me ask you a question. Any reason why you opted not to include a panoramic sky lounge roof, for example? I mean, you see that a lot in luxury cars and it kind of adds a, you know, an airy feel inside. So yeah. why the decision not to go with that? I mean, first thing, obviously, then we couldn't do the sculpture headliner. Oh, sure, you know? of course, yeah. And we don't want to have two variants for this panoramic roof and this sculpture headliner because we want to make the decision for the customer use this special feature because that is really something special a panoramic roof is not something special you, as you said you can have it for each and every other car but there's no other car in the world where you can have this headliner okay. and therefore that was a quite a decision we made that we said okay that is such a highlight we want to have it in every xm and not only in a few of them mm -hmm. all right so maybe we hop in the back so take a look at the space there and also because it's, it's not just carpet so we can talk a little bit about that as well let's take a look yeah. Okay, so we're in the back seat of the BMW XM and right away I've noticed how much space there is, not just length, you know, and height, but also sideways. Tell me more about the design philosophy in the second row. Yeah, I mean, for the very first time, we really tried to do an MH, HP performance car uh, with a luxury rear because today it's really concentrated on the driver seat, normally the MHP cars, yeah? And we said something, okay, if you want to go with your buddies to the beach, to a golf club, whatever, uh, then you want to have an offer on the rear seat, mm -hmm. which really says, okay, that's really luxurious, that's uh, tremendous, yeah, and that was the idea behind it, to so make a kind of cocooning effect, make it very mm -hmm. comfy, make mm -hmm. it very roomy, uh, and therefore we tried, okay, what can we do? Wheelbase is one mm -hmm. step, obviously, but also, for instance, the side bolters go into the door panels, mm -hmm. so that you can exactly sit like you at, uh, at the moment, and mm -hmm. we can speak to each other, mm -hmm. and not looking in the front, but looking to each other, mm -hmm. and that's something which uh, we can offer in this car as well. We made the seats very comfy, mm -hmm. uh, very uh, more comfy than normally on rear seats in BMW M cars, so we can really enjoy it for hours. Uh, mm -hmm. Another feature is, uh, as I said earlier already, the rear window, the tinting of the rear window is 20% darker than regular privacy okay. glassing. So therefore, when the windows are up, then you really have a kind of cocoon feeling, mm -hmm. uh, which you prefer when you are kind of rockstar, sure. you know, and you want to have your uh, own space and yeah. not uh, to be seen from the outside. And that was the idea. And then obviously on this seat, you see the absolutely highlight in the interior is the sculpture headliner. Yeah. I mean, that's then a really course. highlight you can enjoy during the whole drive. So, I mean, I guess the one thing that, um, not to dwell too much on the concept car, but I truly enjoy the um, concept seats that were in the back, kind of like individual kind of seats with really nice, kind of similar to the front seats, but moved to the back. And I'm assuming that was just a, you know, for concept show, really not something you can translate into production. But is that something that you could foresee in the future in other XM models? I mean, we do have a bench in the concept car too. There are no single seats. That was a bench too. Yeah, but it kind of looks the like The material single was a obviously bit, yeah. a bit different mm -hmm. and that's maybe something we can do for a later version of the car mm -hmm. as well for a kind of special version maybe, yeah. Uh, in a few years time or so, that's something we think about it. Again, for the very first uh, approach with this car, we have the new developed petrol mm -hmm. leather, the merino leather, mm -hmm. full leather. We have the uh, headline, etc. We have mm -hmm. so many special things already. Sure. Uh, and we know that customers in this class prefer leather at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's the way to go. Gotcha. That might change in a, f in a few years uh, with other materials, but at the moment in this class, it's out of question. It has to be merino leather. Thanks for the overview inside. Let's hop outside and kind of end the video on, but also talk about the engine and maybe the suspension choice as well. And then we can talk also about the BMW XM label wrap. All right, so now maybe we talk about the engine. That's the last part that we left out. Clearly, as you said, it's a plug-in hybrid, but tell me more about the engine under the hood. And I know it's S68, but is it different than what you see, for example, in the X7 M60i? Yeah, I mean, as you said, it's the S68. So basically the hardware is the same, uh, both in the X7 and also in the uh, X5M mm -hmm. in the LCI, which is coming up. Uh, but we are obviously the only car which has a, is a hybrid version. So mm -hmm. we added a lot of bits to make it possible to run it as a hybrid, so mm -hmm. the second engine in the gearbox and so on and so on. So that's something we only have in the XM. Gotcha. So, but power-wise and specs, it's really identical to what you see in the It's M60. not really identical because uh, as the other cars do not have an electrical machine as an you additional engine, power a bit more. so we adjusted power a bit. We have a bit more in the electrical engine, 150 kilowatts with mm -hmm. the E-engine, and therefore we adjusted the ICE engine a little bit down that we have an overall power which is impressive enough with 650 mm -hmm. already and 800 newton meters uh, and therefore I think we can serve that demand very well. Gotcha. Uh, range? 
Uh, the range uh, WLTP is uh, 82 to 88 kilometers okay. and fully electric. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that's it basically. Gotcha. And um, weight distribution? 50-50. Is it fair to say that the XM is more of a test bed as far as the M plug-in hybrid technology for future products? Yes. As you can imagine, I mean, it's really, really a lot of work to develop an S68 as a hybrid version. Okay. And it would be a shame if you would only use it in one car, obviously. Yeah, okay. it's, it's so good. I mean, you have driven it already. I, know. I think it is good enough for maybe other derivatives in the future, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, suspension. Um, tell me more about that and why the choice of that suspension versus the alternative. Yeah, I mean, uh, the car is quite a big one. The car is also quite a heavy one but still we wanted to perform it as a proper M car. And as you know, all the other M cars do have proper steel con uh, uh, suspension. Mm -hmm. And we decided actively we keep the steering to get to keep the progression into the steering, which we think cannot be achieved with an uh, air suspension yet. Okay. Yeah. Therefore that was a decision. And we put some additional systems to deal with the weight and the dimensions, which is a 48 volt anti-roll system for the very first time in an M car and also the rear axle steering for the very first time in an M car okay. and find the best compromise between performance, which is extremely important for an M car, mm -hmm. but also to keep some comfort in the car more than M cars have today, maybe especially on the rear seat. So for people that might not be engineers, can we simplify down the real life benefits of that 48 volt system? Yeah, the 48 volt uh, anti-roll system has basically a big advantage. Uh, it can set much more power onto each wheel f compared to a 12 volt system from the current cars. That means you can uh, put much more power on each and every wheel during cornering, which means you can prevent much better understeer, for instance, because you get more pressure on the inner, uh, the outer wheel in the corner, on the outer front wheel, and therefore that really helps preventing any kind of understeer, which you would expect from such a uh, SUV in such size and such weight and you don't get it in this car. And that's really amazing for such mm -hmm. a car. You have driven it already. Yeah. I think you can confirm that. And that's one of the main advantages. You have more power available to prevent understeer and deal with the weight and the dimension. So now to end this video, let's talk about future variants of the BMW XM. You've communicated already on the BMW XM label red. Can you share a little bit more about that? Maybe? Yeah, the label red is already uh, communicated, as you said, mm -hmm. will arrive in uh, August next year. Okay. Uh, so we'll start the production and this will have the uh, power for people who wants to have everything, you know. So it will have 750 horsepower okay. system power and it will have 1000 newton meters uh, and it will have even faster accelerating times from zero to 60 and so on. And that is for really for people who want to check everything. I want to have the best from the best. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a very interesting car. And to show this, we have a very special color on the outside, mm -hmm. which is only available for a couple of cars within the label red. Uh, the frozen carbon black as communicated. We have the uh, kidneys and so on in Toronto red to okay. really show this is the top of the top. Will be a limited edition too. Gotcha. Anyway, you know, you can't get have seven over lifetime. It's only a limited amount of cars. Okay. And also we have put a additional interior into it. We won't talk about it today, but that will be very special too for the label red car. Price wise of this model compared to label red? I mean, uh, as communicated on the US market, it's 185,000 before taxes in the US for the label red. In Europe, we haven't communicated yet, but it will be below 200,000 euro, gotcha. including the red. Final question, really. Why the name label red? Because it is special. We wanted to have something special as with so many different issues. Uh, for instance, in competition wouldn't be enough for that what we change. Okay. And therefore we said, let's try something really special and that's what we came up with. Because gotcha. that was the feedback that I've seen there that you could have just named the next one XM Competition and it's an established name so people yeah. might have known already. Yeah. But okay, I'll take that. It answer. is an M car, but it is not an M car like an M3 or the M5 where you have an M3 and then another M3 and then a competition. It's a clearly kind of unicorn car and therefore everything needs to be a bit more special. If you were to pick a color for the XM, this particular one, which one would you take? Me personally? You personally. Black. All black. I have Frozen chosen black for my car. No, no. Sapphire black okay. on the outside. That's what I have chosen with the 23 inch yeah. wheels and under seat. So very iconic, classy. Yeah, it's a badass car. Perfect. Exactly. All right, Sven, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to drive the car next spring, probably. Guys, thanks for watching as always. Thanks for subscribing to our channel and I will see you in the next video.